Roger, Roger. Uh, you're good readable, it's just a lot of stations stepping on each other. Roger, you're good readable, we'll see you later. Well, what's going on everyone? It's Sergeant First Class Ellis Noto with the Indiana National Guard back again with another edition of the Lima Charlie Podcast. I am joined by my co-host, Sergeant First Class Robbie Schweitzer and his boot. Excited Today boot. we have a very, some very special guests from the Indiana Ceremonial Unit uh, and Funeral Honors. Uh, we got Sergeant First Class Joshua Stevens, Sergeant First Class Emily McWilliams, and Staff Sergeant Ashley Cook. Thank you so much for coming on the uh, Lima Charlie Podcast. Tell us about your, yourself. What's your guys' MOS is and, and what do you guys do? Let me but, start. Yeah, go ahead, Sergeant Stevens. So I uh, currently am 11 Bravo. I'm the NCYC for J1 Soldier Family Programs, which part of that is being NCYC for the ceremony unit. Mm -hmm. um, that's my current job. Before that, I was a recruiter. Before that, I was I did a bunch of other stuff. But primarily right now, we are focused on ceremony unit stuff. That's cool. How about yourself, uh, Staff Sergeant McWilliams? What, what do you do? Yeah, so I am out of the unit uh, in Terre Haute, out of the 181st. Um, I'm a full-time technician there. I work as an IT specialist working with our mission. Um, currently, I'm on orders right now, so um, I'm kind of like on a weird schedule, but I work our mission um, completely now, and then I'll go back technician side next year. Um, but I currently um, volunteer for um, our base honor guard with whatever events we have. And what's your, your MOS? I, I might have missed it. In the Air Guard, what do you do? Um, I'm a 1D, so uh, just like client systems, more computer-based IT like specialists. Like IT? Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. And then and Staff Sergeant Cook, what, what do you do in this in the Army National Guard? So I am an 88 Mike. Truck driver? Uh, so I'm a truck driver, but I am also the UCC for the 1438th. Um, I'm a technician down in the J1 Med, and I am the color guard in COIC with the ceremonial unit. So you're you're pretty diverse. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do yeah. a little Absolutely. bit of everything. Awesome. Well, it, it sounds like you guys all have you know very kind of like uh, Star First Class Whiter said, you all have very different jobs, but mm -hmm. you all found yourself here in the in the funeral honors and, and ceremonial unit. Can you tell us what is that? What does that mean to be in the ceremony unit or the funeral honors, and what, what's the history of that? Do you want to talk about ceremony first or military funeral honors? We can, uh, we can talk about honor. military funeral honors first. Okay. You want to... Sure. So military funeral honors is a federal program and it is mandated that we have service members in the state that are able to go out and perform funerals. Um, typically it's a two man team, but you can also have a full honors um, where you have eight man team or you can have the plain side service where you're actually bringing home yep. Um, to see service members from out of state. Oh, wow. Um, or um, like we just had one from Korea that yeah. just got brought, brought, brought back home. Yep. Um, but it is a federal program that we have to have in order to take care of the service members. That's that's so cool. And I know actually Sergeant Stevens and I had spoke about that last week about the um, – what was that gentleman's name that we, we just brought back? That, that uh, Sergeant Charles Garrigus. Sergeant, yeah, Sergeant Charles Garrigus. And that yep. is um, that American hero and that we had the opportunity here as, as National Guardsmen yep. to to render – what was the, the phrase you used at the, at the airport? What? Well, the which, the, the which, uh, dignified transfer? Plain sight honors, dignified transfer, yeah. Very, that's yep. very, very cool. Now, is that more of a funeral honors thing or more of a ceremonial unit thing? Funeral honors. But you also deal so with on, ceremony. On top though, of yeah. on top of our state, essentially, we just we like we just military funerals just did a plants on ours last night. Wow! And then they had to actually drive to Illinois to oh, gosh. Um, with the family to make sure that everything was escorted back, like Urbana, Illinois, or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. But yeah, it was. So it's it's a it's a weekly thing with military funeral honors. They are they average about two hundred and fifty funerals a month throughout oh, the wow. state. So that that's a that's a a big workload. Um, that's a 14 person. They used to have 21, now down mm -hmm. to 14 just because of funding and everything like that. But um, they still, almost every month they do zero turnbacks, which basically means that they're not turning any funerals back mm -hmm. um, because we, we get a lot of requests. Um, and unfortunately, if we don't have enough people uh, traditionally and ADOS, then we have to turn some funerals back. And we obviously don't want to do that. We no, want to try to complete every funeral that we uh, get assigned, but sometimes 
we just don't have the people. This, this is an opportunity for someone to potentially volunteer to be on, on that team, right? So military funeral honors, and we can jump into ceremony unit after that, but the, um, the funeral honors portion are, they actually will pay you to do funerals. So you, there's opportunities with traditional soldiers, those M-Day soldiers that if they want to do funerals, um, and it's kind of like an a la carte thing, right? Like they, if they're in college and they want to just do funerals on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Saturdays, mm-hmm. they can do that. Um, and then we have, have opportunities for ADOS. Right now they're full, but there is turnover in ADOS because we have deployments and then soldiers moving on to tech, jo- tech jobs or AGR jobs. There's always spots that are going to be coming open. I've, since I've been in this job, we've had probably six or seven openings that have been filled pretty, pretty much immediately. But there's a lot of um, there's a lot of good things. You want to talk about the like for, for funeral honors, like the training and like people don't just show up. So we actually have to do that training portion. Yeah. So the training for mm-hmm. military funeral honors, there's a 40 hour course that soldiers are supposed to go through, um, and typically they do it down at Tyndall. Um, there's also an 80 hour course that soldiers yep. can go through at Peck, um, and then we do try to do. Um, one or two training days throughout the month. Yep. Um, onesie twosies can come in and train with the ADOS soldiers. Um, I know that at my unit, yeah. I've done a couple of training days um, on drill status because when I was running the indie team a couple of years ago, um, we didn't have enough soldiers to go out and handle some of the services that we needed to get done. So I actually took a couple of my soldiers from my drill unit and I took them out to take care of a service Um, because we needed more people out there. And it was a good way to show them kind of more of what they're looking at as far as, hey, this is what military funeral honors is. This is what you would be doing if you volunteered. Um, It was a hands-on way of being able to get them out there and showing them this really does mean something and they can see how it affects the family also. So that was kind of one of the ways that I used as a recruiting tool also. Um, But the training events, uh, they can get a little tiring uh, because you're carrying caskets, you're doing firing party, um, you're moving I mean, some of these caskets can weigh 60 or 60, 600 pounds. Like they are not light and mm-hmm. they're on weird terrain most of the time. <laughs> so you got to be able to move those caskets from point A to point B. And it can be a walk. Like it's not usually a short little, hey, we're going to take it from this hearse, walk 100 yards and drop the casket. Uh, it's typically pretty far back in the cemetery where you're going. Um, So the training events, we try to make it as realistic as possible. Um, I know a couple of times we've gone out to Washington Park East even and actually done some. uh, The one that I remember we did um, a horse horse service. Um, One of our horses had passed away from the caisson. And we went ahead and did the burial for the horse, um, and that was our training event. So we put the whole ceremonial unit together and we had some of the military funeral honors guys there as well as the training event. So it was like a group effort for it. Yeah. Some of the other things about military funeral honors, um, we try to make it as comedy as possible, uh, as possible because we know everybody has different schedules. So we'll put out training dates and then if they can't make it, there's, there's always, other times where we can do training. And on top of that, one of the biggest things we've noticed, um, and you guys have experienced this as well, is when soldiers are coming back from AIT, what uniform do they have? They have, most likely they have those pinks and greens, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most, of the, most of the funerals we conduct are in ASUs. So that's kind of another opportunity for them is we have, we will buy their ASUs. We have a bunch of ASUs that are specifically for military funeral honors and ceremony unit. So the we expectation will, isn't going to be on them to yeah, go and get a whole yeah, nother we're not gonna, set We're not going to make them buy. Gotcha. I mean, we have the shoes, the hats, we have everything. Um, the jacket would be, is the only thing that's kind of 
up in there because right now we only have like size 36 to like 50. So, <laughs> so like in between, which is most everybody, we, we don't have, we don't have those sizes, but yeah. we, we're ordering them, but there's, there's a, there's a backup in the system right now. So we're getting them in, but we've never had, since I've been there, we've never had anybody have to pay out of their own pocket for, um, extra shirts or jackets or any stuff like that. Um, we do do some funerals and pinks and greens, but most of the stuff we conduct is going to be an ASU. Gotcha. So you mentioned a 40 hour training course, but then you also talked about training days. Are those training days separate from that 40? Like, are they sustainment training? Is there so much training that somebody that's yep. with funeral mm-hmm. owners is expected to do through a period of time on top of that 40 hours? So <laughs> we would like to have soldiers that come in and do training at least like once a month. Um, but realistically, once you do that 40 hour training, it's kind of just up in the air. If you can find the time to come in or even if the, um, area coordinator can find the time to set up a training day. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there are plenty of people that have gone through the 40 hour course and then have never done a training day again because the timing just doesn't mm-hmm. work out. Um, but they're consistently doing funerals. So they're still kind of And so, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as long as you're still going out and performing the funerals at a consistent pace, then for the most part, like, we're not going to be like, hey, you need to come in and knock out so many training days in mm-hmm. order to get you yep. back out there. Gotcha. Um, now, if you had taken like a two or three year break, um, they may want to have you come in for a day before they send you back out on services. Um, but again, it's kind of up to the area coordinator as to what they would expect from you on the training piece. Gotcha. So it seems really tell us a little bit about the ceremonial unit. Yeah. So my experience is right <laughs> out the gate. Um, I've been in the Army 22 years, I think probably four years ago. It was the first time I heard that we actually had horses. Um, so <laughs> there wasn't a lot of uh, – the ceremony has been the same for a really long time, but I just I just didn't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. I was never in an op- a position where I was asked to do it or I, any stuff like that. So when I came to here and I was kind of like, wait, we do this, we do this, we do this. And, and then I slowly started to find out like all these things that we do uh, – it's it's just, it's like a whole gambit of everything. So when you say ceremony, you know, we don't just say military funeral honors. Yes, we do conduct funerals for um, Indiana Guard retirees, AGR stuff like that. But there's a lot of other things. The best way to, to basically to ex- describe it example wise would be May activities. So if you're, you're the Indiana Army National Guard or Indiana National Guard, most everybody knows what May activities is because that's we have ten ten events over that whole month of May, including month building of May. <laughs> building up to the Memorial Day service, Indy 500, and then another Memorial Day service afterwards. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we do. So things in, things included in that would be the color guards. Right. So mini marathon, mm-hmm. the Grand Prix, Memorial Day service. And there's a bunch of all stuff that we do. All, <laughs> all the things. All the things. Um, on top of that, we do color guards for all the Colts games. Um, sometimes we do... Uh, you guys kind of typically handle the 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 what's the hockey team? I don't know the name. Uh, the, the, fuel. Indy fuel? the fuel. The fuel. Yeah. The fuel. Typically, yeah. the recruiting handles that, but um, we sometimes will provide equipment and stuff like that. Any color guard opportunities? We just did a the national championship game last year that was here for um, NCAA. Mm-hmm. That was a pretty cool opportunity. We do, like I said, we do do funerals, um, but also we do bigger funerals, such as like let's just say a of a geo passes away. So mm-hmm. typically those things we're talking about salute battery to we're talking about case on our horses. We're talking about u- utilizing all the things that we have for those specific funerals. Uh, and obviously a, a higher ranking individual is going to have a little more pizzazz, a little more yeah. things afforded to them <laughs> at their right. funeral yeah. than a, right. than a, a four year soldier, you right. know, a soldier that's been in four years and did their four years and got out or six years or whatever. Um, and then we also have the music section. So we have a lot of singing engagements where people request national anthems and stuff like that. And then we actually have chaplain services as well. So those are, if an event comes up that requests a singer, a chaplain, we'll put the requests out. And then if we get them, you know, we get them. Sometimes we, we have to come back and say, Hey, send out multiple requests and say, Hey, 
please help us. Um, <laughs> there's been this thing where 15 years ago, you know, 10 years ago, there was a ton of people in the ceremony unit. It was, I think it was like 300 strong. Since I've been here and I think before Sergeant First Class Twizzler was here, we haven't had a lot of volunteerism. And I hate to use the ever since COVID thing, but really it's the 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 culture's changed. So mm -hmm. we're trying to we're trying new ways to 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 do recruiting with that. Um, we've had a lot of luck with younger soldiers at the RSDs. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that soldiers that have been in six years or more have a saltier taste in their mouth, but right. Some of the younger soldiers, they have that fire. They want to come and do. They still have they, that enthusiasm from being around. They want to come to the Colts games. They yeah. want to do the Indy 500 stuff. They want to do funerals. Um, those are some of the things that we do for so, for, for ceremony unit. Yeah. And the the biggest takeaway with that, and the, the hardest selling point, honestly, is is mostly it's all volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have AGRs and technicians that will come up to do missions and stuff like that. But a lot of the people we get are be honestly are through military funeral honors right now because gotcha. they are being paid in funeral funeral capacity like the ADOS mm -hmm. um, but we cannot pay them for the ceremonial stuff gotcha. they're, they're kind of like the reward on that portion um, besides the retirement points is like uh Colts tickets or yeah I mean like tickets. if you do a game or itself, something like yeah. you get a plus one or uh, even like um like Indy 500 like most yeah. most likely you get a plus one so there yep. are benefits gotcha. definitely incentives yeah, there's with a lot it of as well there's, yeah, yeah. But, so not necessarily financial incentive but other tangible benefits that yeah absolutely you can gotcha yes uh, we can't pay them right. to do stuff I, I get the question a lot when we talk to the younger soldiers can I get every funeral I do can I get paid for that can I do like five funerals in a day? And like, that's illegal. You can't do that. <laughs> so you get paid for one day for for the funeral honors yep. portion. You get paid mm -hmm. for one day. So you'd mentioned, you both had mentioned recruiting efforts to yep. get people mm -hmm. to come be part of both funeral honors, ceremonial unit, uh, one or the other. However, yep. um, so people listening, sounds interesting to them. How do they get started in the volunteer process? Is there an application? Do they reach out directly to you? Do they coordinate it through their unit? What's what's that look like? So the process, I will tell you before we jump into that. So part of that recruiting effort is we are creating stand-up banners. And there's six of them out there right now. One's at the schoolhouse, one's in front of this building. I think there's one at JCA, one at 76 Brigade. There's, there's a division. Or there's at one division, at division. At division, there's a banner that basically says military funeral honors on the bottom right. There's actually a ceremony unit tab. So the contact information is on there that would go to military funeral honors first. But if you put in the email or requested, hey, I would like to talk about ceremony as well, then then we, they'll put, put them in touch with me. Um, we are creating more banners. So a total of 124 62 armories throughout the state. We're going to put one in every single armory. That's awesome. To get more volunteerism. We're trying to get back to where we were. Um, and we, we're getting, we're starting somewhere, yeah. but it's just, it's, I don't know if you've, if you've experienced it in recruiting, but we, we, it's, it's hard to, yeah. And, it's a different world. And these yeah. volunteers you're talking about, these are your traditional one weekend a month soldiers, right? It can be, it, it can be the traditional one week in a month. It could be AGRs. It could be technicians. It could be, that would be it, pretty much it, but. And you kind of touched on it earlier, but are there any full-time opportunities in in the program? I think you're a tech, right? Uh, you're you're tech and you're AGR, and I'm assuming you're AGR as well, Sergeant. Uh, but you you're the only are you the only AGR person in a side I'm of the, the unit. I'm the only AGR person in uh, Tyndall Armory. Actually, okay. that's where our, we're, we're we're located. So I'm the one AGR that's kind of over all the other most of the other positions, like military and funeral honors, and those are those are either technician or ADOS ADOS positions. Cool. Yeah, so, the, the Air National Guard is a little bit different. We obviously are all volunteer based as well, um, but we if you're like a full time technician per se, like um, on base, um, you can uh, like put in for I believe it's like a it's some sort of day where you get paid for half of a drill day. So we can get paid for it if we want to. When I was a technician, now that I'm orders on orders, I don't. Um, but it, when I was, I got paid for every detail that I wanted to do. It kind of like took place of my drill day. Um, and then also um, you can get like a GOV and you don't have to pay for gas. So there's also like benefits on our end, I guess. But I don't think you guys get those benefits on the RV end, I don't think. We, we don't really give them GSAs or anything yeah. like that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Air Force is... Our, our full-time staff has... They utilize GSAs for funerals, but we don't just... 
you can't do that. So <laughs> that would be frowned upon. Yeah. I know for the most part, like a lot of units, um, even though there is a tag memo out there stating that um, if a funeral is short notice and someone is a part of the ceremonial unit or military funeral honors, that they are supposed to be able to go out and participate in these services. Um, there are a lot of units that give pushback. Um, so that is sometimes an issue that soldiers will come into um, because, of course, the unit wants them to be drilling with them, but you also have the tag memo. So it's kind of one of those, like, which one's more important? Yeah, usually I'll have that. I'll, we have a – the word's getting out, so our higher-up staff are – total support of mm -hmm. making sure we conduct these funerals and make sure they're not they're they're, they're not turned back so um usually it's me having a conversation with the red incensio saying sure. hey i'm this is me nice to meet you and then we say hey can you please let this person off for this you know four hour block and then if they say no then i'll say please and then if not i'll <laughs> we'll call and then we'll yeah. get it we'll get a memo put together and then <laughs> Um, typically, they'll be excused for that because we're not asking them. They're not. It's not like they're getting off for a wedding or something like that. They're doing a military portion right. of service. So it's a, not like a trying to get them. important service. Yeah, I'm not, we're yeah. not trying to get them out just to get them out. You know, they're actually doing a specific role. They're, and they're only for a, a portion of a day. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, and, and I, I'm very clear with the the red sense. I was like, hey, we're not. We're not asking for the entire day. We're asking for, you know, a four hour block. Make sure they can get there safely and then get back to, to drill. There mm -hmm. are some that take all day though. Yeah. There's some, I mean, <laughs> there are some that will take <laughs> yeah, all day. Yeah. There's some funerals that are, I mean, f funerals that are in South Bend and the, and the unit is drilling in yeah. Indianapolis and sometimes they have yeah. to take a whole day yeah. off. You know, I just did that, that funeral, um, for now retired major white cotton. Yep. Um, and that, that took an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys had, had spoke about pay earlier and I, and I will say, obviously I didn't get paid any extra for that, but having the opportunity to serve, someone who has served their entire yeah. mm -hmm. gave so much of their life to our country and community was well that was critically important to me and that yeah. that that really was was the motivator for me just the opportunity to, to give back mm -hmm. and that, that honestly that's a that's actually a great example yeah. because you know we came to recruiting and asked them hey can we get some volunteers and you guys came and and we we put on training at Tyndall and yep. what was your impression of that honestly I mean, it, it was, you know, quick, fast, in a hurry, but uh, it was effective. And, you know, in that, that few hours of training, I learned a lot. So right. I know the 40-hour and 80-hour course is to be a lot a lot more. Yeah. But, you know, I, it was it was definitely an honor to be able to yeah. to serve someone who has served so much of their life for our country yeah, and community. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you were talking about ceremonial, the ceremonial unit, you mentioned the variety of activities that you're involved in. So I assume that you have – different teams that handle yep. different aspects. So what are they? What do they do? What are their roles? So technically there's eight teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So um, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> some of the teams are smaller than others. Um, Color Guard, Sergeant Cook is the NCIC for Color Guard. The firing party, Staff Sergeant Zachary Hicks is the actually the NCIC now for the firing party. We have Sloop Battery. Sergeant Murphy currently is the NCYC for that. Sloop battery, typically we do those for the big geo funerals. Um, a new thing we started last year was, and it used to be a thing years ago, probably before I was even born, but they used to fire a, um, a cannon off mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock in the morning on the day of the Indy 500 to, to basically signify the race, today's yeah. race day. Mm -hmm. Well, we brought that back last year, and oh, then wow. we actually positioned four cannons on each four corners of the track, and during the national anthem, um, bombs bursting in air, they all fired off at the same time. Really? So that was a that was that went over really well. Yeah. And that so we're going to continue to do that for for the, all the future, essentially. Make sure you call us for that, okay? <laughs> you're there anyway. We're, we're going to have, have, have to like there on turn anyway, four or something like that. <laughs> recruiting. Uh, and then we have Case on. Everybody mm -hmm. loves the horses. So we oh, have yeah. a great team. Um, the horses live better than we do. They live down in a, a horse stable down in Columbus, run by a very nice family. They are awesome. They take great care of our horses. Uh, those are actually state property as opposed to they're not federal property. That it's, it's literally a, a state entity. So we kind of have a weird thing with the horses are state property. We have equipment that's for the horses that are state property, but a lot of the other stuff is 
like federal property. Mm. So, but the horses specifically, so I usually have to go get a get funding from the state armory board to make sure those horses are taken care of. But they have no problem; they love those horses, and they outrank all of us. Yeah, yeah. all the horses usually. So we uh, we have eight right now. They're, we're getting to the point where there might be a couple that are going to have to be retired eventually, and that doesn't mean we <laughs> send them to pasture. Like they oh, just go, they go to a, they go to oh. a, they get retired, and then we buy new horses. So it's not. <laughs> Nothing morbid there. They go to they, an actual pasture. There's not. It's not yeah. metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. a metaphor. You're not, you're not, not a metaphor for that. They usually that. go to a good home. That's usually like <laughs> yep. someone within the ceremonial unit. Gotcha. Okay. okay. That's pretty cool. Um, and there are. And then when was it, we do actually do have to do a funeral for. We just had a horse yeah. that just passed away. So we have to do a funeral for that horse. Um, yeah. So that's going to be in, in in plans. What what rank are they? Because so they outrank all of you. I mean, so <laughs> a lot of these horses, like, they can be mass art. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. So is it similar to, like, a military working dog where they're one rank above their handler? Or is it just they actually have a, a, a static rank? They actually have a static rank. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, they actually have rank, and they get awards, and... Yeah. You get tri Yeah, like... <laughs> they get tri <laughs> They they do have a lot of vet bills. They're big, they're big horses, so they, they probably should have Tricare. <laughs> yeah, they they um, a lot of the times we use we use University of Kentucky for hmm. a lot of the stuff we do. Uh, they're world renowned for like their their equestrian vet care. So they like I said they live yeah. better than, they live better than we right. do. Mm-hmm. Right. They they have great they live great down there. Um, the other sections is protocol. So we have that's typically wreath lane and escorts for funerals and those are typically like warrant officers and officers mm-hmm. that'll do protocol uh music section the music section kind of does their own thing they 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 do a lot more events than we do anyways when it comes to like the weekends so the memorial day service and mm-hmm. stuff like that they will play for that they will play for the joint enlistment cer- ceremony stuff like that am i missing one chaplain i think i didn't the chaplain i say the chaplain team but it's usually there's like one or two that mm will typically come to the events. Um, the younger yeah. chaplains, so the chaplain assistants, they will come and kind of like shadow Chaplain Pop or Chaplain mm-hmm. Lasher. Um, but for the most part, it's it's those two and a couple others that do a lot of the a lot of the events that you we f- go to. You forgot Casket also. Casket, my bad. We were well, talking we, about Casket, well, so we, I we forgot. We kind of touched on it. I, know. I, I we, forgot about I know. it. Sergeant First Class Wall, he's yeah. he's the Casket in CYC. Um, he's, he'll be retiring soon, so I know mm-hmm. that's... Yeah, but he'll probably honestly still be part of probably CU because he loves it so much. Yeah. He, he just he's been mm-hmm. overly supportive of everything since I've been here. So he works over a division and he does. Oh, wow. I don't know if you know where that's uh, at, but he gives me an update on when he's retiring. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to be close. Yep. We, so uh, the Army Guard has kind of uh, led this conversation. I, I'll give the Air Guard real quick. Yeah, uh, so how course. is the Air Guard Honor Guard different from the Army side of it? We're a little bit different, but one and the same, pretty much. Um, obviously, we're out of Terre Haute. We work with um, the 122nd as well. Um, so we kind of um, just pick up um, details that they need our help on um, up here um, for the Army National Guard. And then um, they're back at, in Terre Haute. We pretty much just uh, work on details like Indy side, um, Terre Haute, mostly like Colts games, fuel games, stuff like that with a ceremonial unit as well. Um, but it's it's pretty much one and the same. We're really all together. That's um, cool. Well, and, and so I have to ask this, and certain students have brought up the, the pop-ups and, and how to get involved on the Army Guard side. Is it the same for the Air Guard? If, if I'm a member of the Air Guard listening right now, if there's a member, how would they get involved in, in, in the ceremonial unit? Yeah, so um, you have to be a member of our base honor guard first. Um, there's an interview process. Um, there's, um, I think, an application you have to fill out, go through your interview process, and then once you're selected, then um, we have uh, monthly practices with our Joe Weekend. Um, so we go through those. Um, and then after that, um, if the ceremonial unit needs help, um, that's where we pretty much just volunteer for those services up here. That's very cool. So uh, to kind of bring it back to the ceremonial mm-hmm. and funeral honors, you'd mentioned information as to how to get in contact with mm-hmm. you. Um, Air Guard does an interview. What special requirements do you guys have to be part of ceremonial funeral honors on our side? So at one point back in the day, there used to be interviews. And I think eventually we'll get back to that. But right now we've been kind of doing I've been doing interviews. You've been doing interviews with people. 
basically making. I mean, I kind of just making like, sure their uniform co- fits properly. Yeah. That's important. That way. And um, I kind of once someone comes to me and says, "Hey, yep. I want to join the color guard," or if they mm-hmm. say that they want to join a different section, um, I get in contact with the other NCOIC or OIC. Um, because like Kason, their OIC is, um, Chaplain, Chaplain Lasher. Yep. Um, and so I'll get in contact with her and shoot her their information. And then I just add them to my email roster at that point. Yep. Um, it's kind of very informal right now. Right now. Yeah. We're, I mean, we've had, we've had a couple of meetings, um, like I said, since, COVID and everything, we've just been pretty impersonal about everything. And yeah. we, we want to get back to doing the proper interviews and making sure, but um, beggars can't be choosers right now. Let's just be <laughs> honest. With, I mean, we just, we are wanting people. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing that, I mean, th- my biggest thing for military funeral honors and ceremony unit specifically is I tell younger soldiers that you will get a set of dress blues. You know, you get those ASUs, but yeah, I don't I, want you... If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna come and do events for us and, and conduct that, yeah. funerals, we're not gonna just give you a set of a blue so you can <laughs> hit the road. You know, like yeah. that does that's a eight nine hundred dollar set yeah. of uh, uniform that we're just not gonna just give you to you. You know, we have to, you have to come to the training. You have to actually show up to it for events, um, to show you're specifically reliable before we yeah. actually give you that. Yeah. Stuff. So, so would you, would it be fair to say that the for you, the special requirement of doing the CU, the funeral honors, would be a desire to show up and participate. Yeah, I always say that the hardest part of uh, getting to work now is just showing up. Right. You know, like it used to be you're supposed to be at work and you're supposed to, but now it's like, can you can you come to work? And when you're at work, can you care? That's, yeah. the, that's the sad yeah. thing. But right. it, 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 honestly, it is. Well, it's... Um, but if I get, I usually get, will get texts or I will get called. Um, and then I will ask them for a good email. Then I will mm-hmm. send an app- application. They will fill out the application. On the application, it says what you know. What part do you want to be? Do you want to be casket? Do you want to be firing party? Whatever. And then we'll go from there. I'll usually do an interview with them, and then get it kind of warm and fuzzy if actually they are serious about it. If they're not, and then. But I said like before, a lot of our members currently are military funeral honors people. Gotcha. Because they are they are there every mm-hmm. single day. Um, and we will ask for volunteers. Like sometimes we get random color guards at like seven o'clock in the morning for a convention downtown. Oh goodness. And to ask a traditional soldier who doesn't work for us full time, Hey, can you come down here at six 30 in the morning and show up for a color guard? Uh, it's hard for the, honestly, right. sometimes that's, that's a hard sell. But if I have ADOS individuals that, that are wanting to do that, we could, we can, you know, we'll, they will usually pretty open to that. So we, we spoke about this a, a moment ago. Um, what is the, the impact on the veterans? Uh, if the funeral honors and ceremony unit does not receive enough volunteers. Essentially what we said in the beginning was we have to, we have to turn the funeral back and we never want to do that. Of course not. we we went, um, the, the current NCOIC of military funeral honors and the, and the former one, they're both awesome. And they were, there was a, they almost essentially set a standard where they were almost to zero turnbacks. That few wow. months they were at zero turnbacks. And that may not mean anything to you, but that's, a, that's a, it's pretty difficult to accomplish. Yeah. Um, the last time it was accomplished was like over 11 years ago when we're, they were being consistently zero turnbacks. And now we're, they're kind of at that point where they're there again. Um, like I said, the former and the current, they're both, they're both awesome. Um, so we don't want to do the turnbacks. Of course um, not. Yeah. It's specifically the the Indiana Army National Guard soldiers and the, the retirees. They're they're not going to be turned back. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that is what it is. Like we're yeah. going to make sure that they, they are taken care of. So I don't like to. We don't like to choose. But I'm sorry. We we are going to take care of an Indiana National Guard soldier. Before we were, if we have to, if we have to cho- choose between, I have an reservist that maybe served like four years. And that's not to say that perfect there's, world. Yeah. We want to do both, right? right. But and, but and there's, I'm assuming there's federal teams uh, from the active components that can assist with that. Yep. But uh, our priority here in the Indiana uh, National Guard is Indiana Guardsmen. So when uh, 
Congressman Walowski passed away, yeah. the old guard came in from yeah. D.C. to conduct the funeral. However, our horses were utilized for that service. Oh. Um, so I think they did a couple other, the CU actually helped in a couple other aspects of that, but they primarily took care of the funeral services. Yeah. They used our horses. Gotcha. So, so knowing that you do the services, yep. um, how would you say that the funeral honors and CU have made a difference in the lives of veterans and their families as far as the things you're involved in with them? I think if like once you have the opportunity to participate and volunteer for these details, you see, you know, these veterans that you're you're um, in front of or these families and, you know, you can see how much they appreciate us being there. And um, even just like talking with them, I've had like multiple families come up to me or just like veterans and just want to know, like what we do or like um, yep. what our job is back at home. And just like they're genuinely interested and they really appreciate us being there, you know, honoring you know, those who have fallen and those who are still serving. And it's just, it's a really special thing to be a part of for sure. That's a, that's a, a great way you put that. And I know we, we've talked about, you know, the four year soldier or the, you know, the general officer. Um, and, you know, we, we remember that at one point in time, these individuals all rose their right hand and, 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 and wrote a too. check, you know, up until including uh, the cost of their life, right? Yep. A blank check. Yep. Um, and as, as guardsmen, you know, as one, as traditional one week in a month uh, reservist here, uh, I think it's even uh, more moving for us to be able to be involved in these mm -hmm. because, you know, we have our full-time careers. A lot of us have full-time jobs outside of this, and we are going to don that uniform to honor that person that, you know, may have served five years ago, may have served, you know, 60 years ago. And and like you had said, uh, Staff Sergeant, I'm sure that the families really appreciate it. Could you guys share some stories maybe uh, without divulging too, too much, uh, too many personal details of, of something that you remember from your time with funeral honors or ceremonial unit? So the most recent, I can... I mean, for my, for me, the most recent thing you mentioned earlier was the so repatriation essentially. Do, yeah. Do you you know what repatriation is, or do you want me to just kind of explain? Yeah, if you explain to our listeners. So repatriation is essentially and no, bringing. And he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't know. But the the essentially we're re, we're returning a fallen soldier who was mm -hmm. killed in action um, from a past time. So and we have the we have a couple more coming up, but the one we just conducted, um, he was killed in. Korea, nineteen December first, nineteen fifty, and he was missing in action, killed in action for over seventy two years. Wow! Um, so when Trump made a deal with Kim Jong Un, is that the? I can't remember the the leader of North Korea. They yeah, were, there was a North, some, Korea. <laughs> North, North Korea, right? Yeah. Kim Jong Un is that his name? Yeah, I don't know his name. Well, <laughs> you know, it's okay. We're not the a leader. Of That's why I said just North Korea. The leader of North Korea. There was a there's a thing called K fifty five. There was fifty five boxes mm -hmm. of remains from the Korean War, and it, it, a lot of people will tell you the Korean War is the forgotten war mm -hmm. because we I talk agree, about yeah. the World War II. We talk about World War II a lot. We all there's been movies made about it, and there's been a bunch of movies made about Vietnam. But there's there was that one that happened in the middle that was kind of a big deal. And we have a lot of fallen soldiers that are still missing in action. Well. They found his remains. They identified him through DNA of family members that are still living here in Indianapolis. And they actually just lived down the road, right down the road, off a of man road. Um, he was from Terre Haute. Like I said, his, his, his living brother is still alive. Oh, wow. We notified the family. They were notified in, I believe, November. And then I was actually the Casualty Assistance Officer for that one. So I met with the family. And the entire time they've just been overly gracious with everything with the, the, I mean, I'm thanking them for like what their brother and their grandfather their did, relative, yeah. you know, what they, what he did. I mean, he was awarded a distinguished service cross, wow. which is right below the medal of honor. So mm -hmm. I've never even seen one in person. So when they actually sent it to me, the joke was, Hey, Sergeant Stevens, you can just give that to the family. I'm like we're not, I'm not giving the family anything. We will, we'll ask this upstairs and see who wants to present that award. But we conducted the, the funeral, we use utilize our case on firing party. Um, the whole time. I mean, there there was by the end of it, the family was 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 crying. They were just so happy mm -hmm. that we were there and they couldn't imagine couldn't imagine like that we would give up our time to do this. And I'm like, we don't wear name tags. Um there used to be a time where C used to wear name tags, but mm -hmm. I've I've kind of nixed out like we don't wear name tags anymore because mm -hmm. I always tell people it's never going to be about us. No, of course like, not. The, the job we do, it's not about us. It's not about you looking sharp in your uniform. It's about taking care of the family and taking care of their needs. So, Military um, Funeral Honors doesn't wear name tags. Yeah. Just I, like they've never worn yeah. name tags. Well, it, it, 
it, again, it speaks to us honoring those who have, yep. you know, served uh, with us or, or served before us and, and honoring uh, that veteran and, and their family. Yeah. Mm. The, the, yeah. the standards are still the same, though. Like I said, yeah. we talk about the four year soldier. That, I mean, like I said, they all rose to the right hand. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there's not like a, a lesser flag fold or a, right. a, a lesser firing party. They st they're still going to get those portions of the funeral that are, that's afforded to them. Okay. We're not going to be able to send the B right. team. They're all going to get the, they're all going to get the same standard. Right. And um, it really, it really like humbles you as a, a member of the honor guard or a member of this ceremonial unit. You know, we all, I'm full time. I know a lot of you guys mm -hmm. are full time as well, but we put on this uniform every day and, uh, a lot of the times it's taken for granted. Absolutely. Like we take, we put this on every day and we go to work, but like when you're a part of something bigger than that and you're honoring those that are serving with you or those that have fallen, um, it really puts into perspective, you know, like I am a part of something way bigger than just putting on my uniform every morning, you know? Um, and that makes it really special and something like, I don't know why I, I, I wouldn't see myself not ever being in base honor guard. Like I, I love it. That aspect awesome. of it's amazing. Yeah, I definitely think it's easy to get in a rut and feel sorry for yourself. But then as soon as you yeah. go to these events, specifically yeah. funerals, when you're presenting the flag, you to just the family feel. Member I mean, no, you're just. If you ever, if you're feeling having a bad day, you're, you just feel selfish because you, the family just gave up so much. Their family mm -hmm. members there, and you're. I mean, I you feel guilty about it because you're just. It's an honor to be there to to be able to support those events. Very, very mm -hmm. humbling. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. So we've talked about impact on families, those m more meaningful funeral honor experiences. Mm -hmm. we'll pivot a little bit. What has been a, a memorable or fun CU style event? Something that you're like, oh, this is really cool that I got to do this. <laughs> Let's, we'll, we'll bring it. We'll bring the the mood Sorry, up a Kurt, bit. Do you want to? <laughs> sure. So mine was actually. Um... So we did the commissioning of the USS Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. oh, wow. And that one was the most memorable for me because so at that point I had done color guards. I had done casket team. I had done firing party um, protocol. I've done caisson. I had never done the salute battery. Um, so that was the first mission, actually only mission. Um, that I was able to do the salute battery. So we got to drive up the howitzers to somewhere up by South Bend. Um, Great Lakes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, <laughs> I forgot. I don't know. This had been a few years ago. I don't remember. Um, but we drove up there and then we staged the howitzers and um, stayed the night up there. And then we actually um, got to fire the salute battery like it was so cool that's pretty cool when i had never been able to be a part of that and i'd always wanted to do it so sergeant stevens does not let me near the cannons for some reason i'm not sure <laughs> no. what i did <laughs> but i am not allowed yeah. near any cannons i wasn't allowed to either until that one so, so and it's the only one yeah the one thing we haven't really talked about is us and Air Force, we typically do a lot of color guards together, but we yeah. do we do do joint service color guards, yeah. mm -hmm. and we really haven't talked about that. Uh, a lot of the main yeah. activities are joint service color guards. the The national championship game last year was a joint service color guard, and that's all branches, including mm -hmm. Space Force. Um, that they will typically bring it, come in, and like I said, that's opportunities for them to bring their families. Um, and those are those are some those are some usually bigger events. Like for me, you just. May was a baptism, but just for me, yeah, like, yeah. May is like, for me, May is, I mean, I work for basically PAO the entire time and I Our just, friends I, at PAO. I just do what I'm told, if you know what I mean. So, um, but no, it is what it no is because there's, there's a ton of, there's just a ton of stuff that goes on during May, like the mini marathon leading up to the 500. Then even after like everyone's recovering from the 500, like we're, we're at Crown Hill the next mm -hmm. day doing a, doing a funeral or a memorial service. So that was the big, my biggest takeaway opportunity wise was to see how everything in May played out. Yes, the, being at the 500 and seeing, you know, movie stars and, and country cool. singers, it was cool. Like, that's, but, that's your most memorable moment, then it sounds like. No, is, is the month of May. The month of May, the whole May, and the whole, all May. Like I've already, that's, I've been through it now, so I can kind of mentally prepare myself. I'm taking some vacation before May. Before but and after. I know when May hits, it's, it's going to be every single day. 
Yeah. But it's 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 so much fun though. Have you had similar experiences? What was your most memorable experience uh, in the ceremonial unit? Um, I work a lot of like the events. I would say, the, yeah, Come on. <laughs> yeah the anvil was the, the, anvil. the best one. I got to hit the anvil at the Colts game, oh. um, which was really fun. Um, I honestly, I'm normally like doing the um, detail for the um, the national anthem, obviously, at the beginning. So I never even knew that the anvil was like a thing um, because I was always like in the background waiting for the national anthem. Yeah. Um, but when they had asked us, I was like, yeah, sure. And it was actually really cool. It was awesome. Um, they put my name on the big screen. Um, we, I like got the game started. It was amazing. For, I, he makes fun of me. I think it's because no, he's jealous. No, I remind her. I think he's just jealous. I am probably jealous. jealous. For those of us that don't watch sports, <laughs> uh, not saying that would be me, but what is the anvil? Um, it's like a, um, well, you know what an anvil, like an you know anvil. anvil is, right? It's like a, you know what an anvil is? Of course. <laughs> it's not for me. It's for people who may not watch oh, sports. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> the Colts have like an anvil, um, uh, off to the side at the stadium and then they have somebody each game, um, they will hit it with like a sledgehammer pretty much and That's get the cool. crowd going like right thing. before the That's game. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, you it do was know really what fun. an anvil is. I, feel I like know you exactly. Didn't what, don't that. ask me to draw an anvil, but I know what one is. <laughs> we we've covered yes. a lot of topics. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Could, if if anyone's listening to this podcast and they and they, they want to get more involved uh, and support funeral honors or CU, what's the best route? I would say, I mean, talk to any of us, anybody, or talk how do they to... get a hold of you? Oh, my. so the uh, the the banners currently the banners. Uh, I mean, I can always give out our phone number, but it's just. I don't know if that's appropriate for. Is your for, information in the National Guard app? Because so, we've had a few people plug um, the app, and so the National Guard app. Yes, we also um, those have access to the SharePoint. We I have an entire SharePoint page dedicated to ceremony unit and funeral honors. Um, we all work at Tyndall Armory. Um, a lot of it's by word of mouth, though. But you, you, usually people will reach out to me, or what people will like put yeah. me in contact, put me in contact with whoever, and then we will get. Then the application, then to have that conversation about like, hey, can we maybe National Guard to IN dot gov? That be a good start, you think? It is, but <laughs> search there, for ceremony unit. We or, need to, yeah. but we need the the funny thing about that is is the phone number's not right on that. Okay, um, so there's some things that me, need to be updated on there. Sure, I bet you we can put a link to it actually uh, in, in the video. In the video, really, we yes. have some, a really good director and producer. Wow, that's good. Technology is uh, amazing. I, I will ask one last question. If you could offer one piece of advice to someone that's thinking about joining the military, what would it be? Joining the military? Or... Joining the military. I will tell, I will tell you, uh, this is a piece of advice slash quick story. Uh, when 18 year old Josh Stevens, my dad would tell me and my brother, you guys are idiots. You need to join the military. I'm like, dad, I'm 18. I'm smarter than you. Well then <laughs> fast forward when I was 21, my dad passed away um, abruptly and then I joined the military, and I think I was like three weeks into basic, and I'm like, I think I should listen to my dad more. He was really smart. <laughs> and ever since then, I've done so many awesome things in the military and so many things that have been afforded to me just because I've been in the military. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't dismiss it. I would at least tell people, if you're thinking about it, ask questions, talk to Talk to a person you may may know Trusted in the military. Person, yeah. If you don't want to talk to a recruiter, talk to somebody, then they can put you in touch with yeah. a recruiter. But I've never, I mean, so many awesome experiences in the military for me. Um, yeah, there's there's bad days, but you have bad days at work too, at other places yeah. at work. Yeah, my personal experience, I I joined when I was 17, and I think that's crazy. Now looking back, I'm like, wow, I just like signed my life away. Just like, yep, why not? Six years. Um, but my advice would be if you're thinking about it, just do it. I mean, why not? I wanted to join in a different career field and end up joining in IT, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I have learned so much. I've gotten certifications, so many benefits. Um, mm -hmm. I have a full-time job. Um, I get to travel. It's amazing. That's cool. Staff Sergeant Cook, how about yourself? Uh, so I also joined at 17. Oh, wow. Um, and we, we were all late. I was 23, <laughs> 23, 22, 23 when I joined. So I've now had 10 years in, and I've done all kinds of things. I mean, I've been to Japan, been to Europe. I've done all kinds of different events with the ceremonial unit, military funeral honors. Um, I mean, it's been, I've been full time now for almost seven years of the 10 years. Um, I mean, 
my wife tells me all the time, if you get out of the military, you're going to have an identity crisis. So <laughs> um, I literally don't know what I would do without yeah. the military. Um, and when I was 17, like, I really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, right. And so I kind of just joined and was like, well, we'll see what this, how this goes. And yeah. here I am. So, I mean, if you're thinking about it, like they both said, I'm at least give it a try or mm -hmm. talk to somebody you trust and get a real feel for yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great advice. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Well, thank you guys so much for coming mm -hmm. on yep. the Lima Charlie podcast. We definitely appreciate you sharing these stories about the ceremony unit, the funeral uh, honors and, and kind of your guys' experiences here in the military. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you. No problem. Lima Charlie out.